near me all right now. That's Well, hey there. My name is Dan. I'm a music teacher about to listen to Xenoblade Chronicles 3 original soundtrack for the very first time. Together, we're going to discover hidden connections, understand how music works, and have fun while we do it. Are you ready? Type a 1 in the chat if you are ready. And we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to get rocking. We're going to get rolling. Here we go with Off Seer. Ooh.
a beautiful way to start off this OST. I am intrigued because I was expecting something that was going to be a little bit more fastball down the middle, like maybe hearkening back to the first Xenoblade main theme, which is I did just spend the f first 15 minutes before I got on this stream. Listen, you know, make sure I had it. And while we heard gestures in the chord progression at the main theme, arguably, this was something completely different. This was beautiful. So as we go through, what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to start to draw connections, talk about things together in terms of music theory. A couple things right here. We can hear that this song is actually in the key of A minor, at least by the time we get to... So chord right here is A minor. Then we go to F major, to C, to G major. D minor, to B flat, A sus2, uh, to, to D major, okay, C, G, more G. <laughs> And then back to A minor. So what am I saying? What does everything I just say mean? I'm going to give you a quick crash course so you can understand everything I just said and everything I'm going to say for the rest of this here stream and this here Xenoblade series. So music's pretty easy once we break it down. And let me show you how. So we're going to take the first seven letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. This is the basic musical alphabet. All music you listen to uses, well, most music you listen to uses this these seven letters, that's it. So A, B, C, D, F, G, and after G, we don't go to H, we go back to A. So we go A, B, C, D, F, G, A, B, C, D, F, G. We can go backwards, we can go G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. And the way it works is every time we say A, the next A is higher than the first A. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, you have that A, is higher than the first A. Type of one, if you can hear that this second A is higher than the first A, then we go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. And then that A would be higher than the second one, which is higher than the first one. So that's the way music works. We go A, B, C, D, F, G, and every time we get to A, the A is higher than the A before it, and then also the B will be higher, and C, and so on and so forth. Now, the way we categorize music or use music theory to understand and break it down is we put a number to each one of these letters. So A could be 1, B is 2, C is 3, D is 4, E is 5, F is 6, G is 7. Now, here's a really cool thing about music. A is not always going to be 1. So, for example, here A was 1, which is really cool. So A to F, which is 6, to flat 3, to flat 7. Now, you could argue that what I just played was actually in C minor. It was a 6, 4, 1, 5. And I would actually tend to agree with you, which means next time I'm going to listen to the whole song first before I tell you what key it's in. But here's the thing. So, look, if we're going to pretend this is C, C is 1. Then D is 2, E is 3, F is 4, G is 5. Remember, we don't go to H, we we'll go back to A. So A is 6, B is 7. So C is 1. So we would start, if we start on A and we think of C of being 1, we have 6, 4, F, 1, C, 5, G. Type of 2, if this number system is making sense to you. This is like, if you get this, you're going to get music. This, this is it. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then the 1 can start on different places. So if D is 1, then E is 2, F is 3, G is 4, A is 5, B is 6. Like this. That's it. That is literally it for understanding music. Cool. All right, now, one more piece of little uh, music theory I'm going to give you is understanding the difference between major and minor. So, for example, this is minor. This is major. Now, you might say, well, those just sound like two different sounds. Okay, minor is going to sound like a rainy autumn day. Here's minor. Here's minor. I got a spider on me. Here's minor. Here's minor. Here's minor. Here's minor. Here's minor. So it sounds like a rainy autumn day. Now major sounds like a happy time with, uh, I don't know, your family at a Froyo shop. That's frozen yogurt. So major, 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 major. Sounds happy. So the quality, the quality of the sound 
is major. The quality of the sound is minor. So that's what we mean by major and minors. We're talking about the quality of the sound. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then major, happy, minor, sad. And there's other qualities, and there's way more to learn with music, but if you have that understanding, you're gonna go very far and you're gonna understand most everything we're gonna talk about here today. Okay, let's keep this thing going with Battlefield, the scramble for life. Much, I much prefer my eggs scrambled than scrambling for my life, but here we go. It's like so, uh, uh, Call of the Cthulhu. High drama reminds me a lot of. Sorry. <laughs> okay, now for the talk. High drama reminds me a lot of the theme of the White Tower in Lord of the Rings. Bum, 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 which I think was actually an inverted version of the Shire theme. Anyway, back to Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Clearly, scramble for life. Some sort of army is happening here. Some sort of conflict is happening here. Just from the music here, the gong, 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 type drums, that means usually military conflict, military things going on. A big fight of some sort is going down. So let's break down a little bit of what's going on here in the chords in Battlefield Scramble for Life. So it starts off with E. And so we think E is going to be one.
And now it's starting to move away. It's starting to introduce more tension. Why is this tension? Well, because we can hear in the flutes right here, they're going, um, ba, 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 ba. Type of one if you can hear that. Um, ba, 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 Type of one if you can hear that. And so what's happening is we've established the home base as being E. Now what we're hearing is the and listen to how dissonant this sounds over the E. So the composer just gave you an E. They just showed you where home base was, and now they're gonna tear everything away from you. So listen. So you hear that second note, this right here? This is called a D sharp note. And it is very close to E, and because it's so close, it creates a lot of tension. Because we think about A, B, C, D, E, F, G, D and E are right next to each other in the alphabet. So these notes are also right next to each other and because they're so close that actually creates tension and friction. If you've ever been sitting on a bus or sitting on a subway and someone sits a little too close to you and you feel that tension in your body, it's the same thing here with notes. Sometimes when notes are very close together, they can actually create more tension than notes that are far away from each other. And we hear that on display right here. I mean, type a three in the chat, that second note is ringing like a little E to you. It's making you go E just a little bit when I do this. Like it's making you go E. Like you're not playing with a clean sound. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of gives you shivers up your spine. And well, that's a way in music of creating tension and drama. Okay, let's keep this thing rocking and rolling, rocking and reeling with tactical action dynamic. Going up a minor third, just like Final Fantasy VII. All right, four on the floor, kick, let's go. Ooh, we're hearing hints of a riff here. Oh, keep it going. I'll keep it going.
Oh, heck yes, that was awesome. So let's actually break down, break down what happened there. So what's really cool is so far we're seeing a lot of A and a lot of E as being our ones. And we're gonna look for this as actually not a light motif in and of itself, but rather particular keys the composer may use or may continue use, or maybe not. We got nine discs to go. So we'll see, this may also just be a first sort of oh, biome where we have an E and an A being used quite a bit. So tactical action. Let's go back and actually break this down so I can grab this guitar riff because that was really cool. What's a riff, you ask? Well, a riff is a repeated idea that's typically lower than higher. Uh, an idea that's repeated that's higher, not lower, might be called a lick. There you go. So riff is low. And again, I'm paraphrasing there. Let's actually get it this time. So here. Oh my goodness, the rhythm just throwing me for a loop. Cool. All right, cool. Got it. Okay, so what's happening here in this riff is the composer's using notes from an E minor scale, an E natural minor scale, as far as we can tell up to this point. So E is one, and then it's going E, E, B, G, A, F sharp, G, E, E, B, B, A. Now what's really cool about this is that this fits perfectly over this E the whole time. Now before, we just heard E with so much tension with the D sharp over it, creating all this anxiety, all this feeling of uncertainty. And now this is bringing E right on home using notes from an E natural minor scale. Beautiful stuff. And then what's pretty interesting too is right now E is one. E still one. E still one. And right here's being applied flat six, C to flat seven, D. All right, so here's still E is one. Now switching to A. A now feels like one. And my, my rhythm's not perfect here, but I'm getting the general idea of what's getting down here. So we have a tonal center, the tonal center of E, where we feel like E is one, and then it shifts, and it sort of feels like we've moved into a tonal center of A. And we'd call this tonicizing the key of A is one way of saying it. I really like to think about that right there as technically a key change because you could think, you could <laughs> technically think about it as this being an E the whole time. When we go to A, A is four. Because remember, we go E, F, G, A, A being four. But here, because we stay on A for so long, eh, it'd be debatable. It'd be interesting to see how the composer actually wrote it out, whether they actually put a key change in there, or if they were thinking of it as being in the key of E the whole time. So E is one the whole time, and A is in fact four, not one. Type of two if you track that explanation using the music theory I taught you at the beginning of the stream. Type of three if that was confusing and I will slow it down as I go. All right, let's check out the exhausted, victorious, the speechless, defeated. Sounds like me and my sister after an argument. Let's go.
Oh! Parallel Major, look out! So what's really interesting here is the use of something called the parallel major and the parallel minor. Well, you know about major and minor now, so let's talk about what parallel means. Parallel means they're going to share the same letter name, which means they're both going to start on the same note. So for example, here's an A minor. So A is the first note and then it's minor. Remember that autumn kind of rainy day sound. And then we can take A and play A major. And it's kind of that more happy sound, so minor major, minor, major. Now to show the difference between the victorious and defeated, the composer here is very clearly writing a story in the music by using the parallel minor and major, the minor to represent people who have lost, the major to represent people who have won. We can hear the composer does it several times and there was a moment, if you were watching my reaction in there where I was trying to play along with my guitar because I thought I could predict what was going to happen next and no, the use of parallel major and minors actually threw me because the composer started using them in unexpected places and in unexpected and surprising and delightful ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually break down what was happening here in a couple of the places between the parallel major, parallel minor, where the composer is literally painting a victor and a loser with the music. Now, quick note before I jump in and do this, we've seen parallel major and parallel minor used in many different video game soundtracks to describe when there's mystery, when someone is being duplicitous, when something is hidden that we haven't quite figured out yet. Uh, when someone is, yeah, being two-faced, just to be clear, just to put a finer point on duplicitous, when someone's being two-faced, when they're telling you one thing but they're doing another, we've heard many different video games use the parallel major, parallel minor to describe these types of situations. This is the first time, at least so far on this channel, with all the reviews we've done, we've heard a composer paint an idea of a victor and a loser, a winner and a loser, with using the parallel major and parallel minor. So that said, let's go and actually check out some of these moments here. 
Now we hear the ba ba ba. That was one of the things that was making me think of. And that's gold something. I can't quite remember the name of that piece of music. And if anyone can remember the name of that piece of music, I'd be very, very grateful if you would put it in the chat because it's slipping the tip of my brain. And this is the second time we've heard feeling something like that. Okay. So back to our parallel major, parallel minor. Ecstasy of gold. Thank you, guys. Yeah, we heard chord. We heard chords a while ago that felt like ecstasy of gold, and then we're hearing little melodic fragments that it's not copying uh, ecstasy of gold. It's pulling from that feeling of majesty and grandeur and scale that ecstasy of gold imparts through the notes, instrumentation, harmonies, everything. Okay, so now we're going to like G. So A is one, so G is gonna be seven. F, which is gonna be six. E, which is five. Here's e, e major. Now we're not going back to A minor here, we're going back to A major. So we've now switched. We just described the losers. We went. And now we're gonna to go to the winners with the parallel major. Again to G, which is 7. Again to F. E minor. D, ma D minor. Now what's really interesting here is the first time through it went A minor, G, F, E major. Now the second time through it goes A major, G, F, E minor. So we switched the minor and the major qualities on the A and the E the first time through and the second time through, which for me, at least in my interpretation, implies that even though you win at something, whenever you have the mindset or a situation when there is a winner or a loser, even the winner takes a little bit of damage home with them. You know, even in war, when there's someone's a winner, you still take damage home. You still have losses. And that minor E minor chord being changed from the E major chord we heard the first time, for me at least, represents that loss, even in victory. D minor, which is four. E major. E minor, right there. E major, victorious. E minor, defeat. And so we can see that between A major and A minor, and E major and E minor, which by the way, the one is A, the five is E, these are two of the most important foundational chords in all of music, the one and the five, not the most important all the time, but for a lot of things. And to play with the qualities of major and minor here, very fascinating stuff, and really telling the story of a winner or loser contending a battle. Exa yeah, exa exactly. Soybean, thank you very much for bringing me back home. The exhausted victorious. Exactly. Yep. All right, let's check out Young Warriors. Now, by the way, if you're thinking I'm psychic, I am not. The composer's just done such a tremendously clear job of highlighting story points and plot points with the music that I'm then able to extrapolate using the information of song title and then also all the OSTs I've listened to, all the music I've learned, and then coming and bringing this to you. Okay, let's go Young Warriors. A is one right now.
six, five minor, four, five, ooh, we'll have to come back to that one. Now go into the 4, go into D. Okay, so it's interesting here that started out, the composer set us up thinking that maybe A was going to be one, but it turns out D was actually one the whole time. So, which means if D is one, A is what chat? If D is one, what is A? Put it in the chat. If D is one, what is A? D is one, what is A? Come on guys, you can do this. I believe in you. Yes, I see a five, exactly. A is five, so it actually starts off, we could think about this starting off at five, or indeed, as you may hear me say many times throughout the stream, there's gonna be more than one way to think about this. We could also think about the A as being one, and then shifting and deciding D is going to be the new one. Okay. Now, tons of drama here. Young Warriors, doesn't sound like the Young Warriors are having a uh, good time here, or what they're doing is very difficult or they're up against odds because this sounds very dramatic. It doesn't really sound like training music or perhaps the training is just, <sighs> maybe I'm misreading it. And the level of emotion in this soundtrack is gonna be so far above. Like if this is training, like what's the battle gonna be like? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, how far are we gonna take this? They're going through it. Yeah, it sounds pretty tough. This doesn't sound like an easy training camp. Like an easy training camp, I would expect something a little bit more military. And now I just did the fox theme, but you get the idea. Something with snare drums, maybe. Something a little bit more fire emblem-y, where it's, yeah, it just feels like a camp, you know, type of a thing. But this feels like some really, really, really hard trials and tribulations someone is going through. Now, why do I say that? Well, let's take a look at this music and I'll break down some of the elements that would lead me to that conclusion. So number one, the instruments being used, orchestral. Now, we've heard orchestral sort of arrangements throughout the Xenoblade series, so this is nothing new and nothing different, but if it was, l if the stakes were less high, I would expect less instruments to be playing or for the instruments to be playing a little less, a little less energy going on. Now this right here, this could be like part of an action movie right here. Like what we just heard, that would fit the, especially that, that drum sound that we were hearing, that would fit 
in almost any action movie as the people starting the job that they are hired for, right? So it's like they show up to the building and everything's starting to go according, like before the plan goes off the rails, as it tends to do in action movies. This sounds like someone showing up and starting some type of action sequence. So that, that already is way above emotionally the level of thinking of a training camp. Yeah, and building, building tension. Now this sound, this sounds like a little bit of a respite here, from the F to the E minor, D minor, E minor. Oh yeah, we've been figured that one out. Ooh. Air, air my. Hey, my, what is this chord here? You know, it sounds exactly like the chord at the end of the Star Wars theme. Yeah, but a da 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 ba right there. Kind of a minor major seven type thing, maybe, with some added flavors in there. Yeah, a minor major seven. And again, we talked about major. We talked about minor. Now, the minor major seven is kind of like combining a minor and major together. It's a very dissonant sound. It kind of fights against itself because it has both major and minor parts inside of itself. That sound right there. Okay, so what else leads me to think that this is more high stakes? Well, we heard these... right here. This is not we're on a regimented schedule getting three square meals a day and also running 10 miles and doing <laughs> pull-ups and firearm exercises. This is like danger. Yeah, you know, going on in the trumpet, combined with all the percussion that's happening, all the instruments. Reminds me a little bit more of the scene where, like, Ray is running through that obstacle, the Jedi obstacle course. It's like, you know, a little bit of danger, maybe turn to the dark side a little bit, who knows? A little bit of danger. Let's keep going with Lost Days of Warmth. Let's rock and roll. Type it to in the chat if you are enjoying this stream. If you're not enjoying, please type in full what you are not enjoying so I can improve. Thank you.
Wow. Clearly something very emotional going on here, and I will show you why I think Lost Days of Warmth are not just reminiscing, but perhaps reminiscing about... So it's reminiscing about someone that some character loved a lot, I think, or a, a, a person, place, or thing. A character had a very, very, very deep and profound emotional connection to. Type of two, if I'm on the right path with my guess as to what's going on with Lost Days of Warmth. It's not just thinking back in time. It's a very, very, very strong emotional connection going on. Yes, okay, cool. So, what leads me to believe that? Well, I'll show you as I break down the song as we go through. So, we're starting off with C as being one. So we're starting on four, which is F, to one, which is C. Again, four, F. Ooh, uh, two, yeah, maybe three there. To six, two, to five. Five sus four, to five to one. Five sus four to five to six to six to four to five. And let me catch what happened right there. And yeah, maybe two five four F. G five E three E minor A minor six D two B flat flat seven and then right here it's A sus four A sus two to A two a minor, a very interesting shift right here. There's some something complex emotionally happening here with so many different qualities with the same lowest note. So the lowest note here is the A. So we go A sus4, which is a quality, to A major, to A sus2, to A major, to A minor. Parallel major, parallel minor, so many other chord qualities. There's a very interesting, deep emotional moment that's happening here that's maybe bittersweet or the character hasn't processed through it. Something's going on here. And then also we have a... We have a 2-5. Now we're switching where the 1 is. We've got 2-5, 1. So it's now it's going to feel like F is 1 maybe? Yeah, F is now 1. Oh, that's actually it's still 4. Yeah, so that's a, when you do a two, five, one, so it's G, C, F, because if F is one, G is two, C is five, we're doing a two, five, one to F, but then F is not even one. So the two, five, one can make us think F is going to be one, but it's not just a way of getting to four. F is still four, and then to C, which is one. C, which is one. F, which is four. Now here's what's gonna start taking off emotionally. This is where it really starts to hit.
D minor to G. Now all of a sudden it's four, five, one in E flat. So we've gone from C being one to now E flat being one. And the way in which we've moved from C being one to E flat being one, this is called a key change. We've changed the entire emotion, all the notes, the seven notes we're using, what we're considering to be one, we're completely swapping that out. And by doing that, that creates a big emotional lift, a big emotional change. If you listen to the song, I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston, you'll hear at the very end, the song goes higher than it's been the whole time. And that's that emotional shift, that big emotional jump. And that's how I could extrapolate and guess that there's a very deep emotional connection happening here is because of that key change moving up, not just because it went to E flat up from C, but just because it went higher, there was a key change and the music swells and grows in this beautiful way here, which is what leads me to be able to extrapolate that idea. Okay, let's go to Shining Aspiration. Inherited Melody. Perhaps there's going to be a light motif here we'll recognize. Who knows? We shall see. Let's get this thing going. Sorry. Yeah. Bon, 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 bon. Ecstasy of Gold. This is definitely about the evil person showing their plan. I feel like we just heard about the evil plans for the hero and now we're seeing how the hero's gonna defend the evil plans. Not quite? Okay, well. Sometimes I get it wrong.
Okay, what we're gonna do for this piece is I'm gonna make sure every single one of you watching this right now can make the connection to ecstasy of gold and this motif that we keep hearing over and over again. So we hear. And that's literally one, two, three, four. The first four notes of ecstasy of gold, the theme from ecstasy of gold. So right there. Bo ba ba ba. All right, type a one in the chat if you can hear it. Type a two in the chat if you can't hear it. Type a one in the chat if you can hear it. Type a two in the chat if you cannot hear the connection of All right, many of you can hear it. So, guys, this is so cool because what we can hear, well, what, what do you mean it's definitely not intentional? How, I mean, how, how, are we, how are we to know that the composer was not inspired by this? Yes, indeed, at the beginning and first. Here's an interesting idea for you, and many artists subscribe to this. I also subscribe to this. If you steal from one person, it's stealing. If you steal from everyone, it's research and learning. All right, I'm gonna run this by you one more time. If you steal from one person, it's stealing. If you steal from everyone, it is research and learning. Some of the best artists of all time, music included, stole ruthlessly, here's the key, from everyone and so the whole thing here is even to say stealing is almost wrong because really it's just about saying oh this group of notes inspires me to create something new so let me start where you started and now i'm going to take it in a new direction make sense cool so when i say that it sounds very much like it. And the fact that we've heard this so many times is literally one of the main underpinnings of this soundtrack so far as far as the first eight tracks go. And granted, it is a nine disc soundtrack. So we are just starting off. But there you go. So we can hear, at least my opinion, I feel confident in saying inspiration taken from Ecstasy of Gold. Very cool. Okay, let's keep rocking and rolling with y Yazana Plains. If Yazana Plain, you might not be able to get my call. Okay. Play? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Starting off with the fifth, yeah, okay. little ecstasy of gold right there, the first two notes, that perfect fifth. Izana, thank you.
Something's going wrong and he's on the planes. Oh, we're gonna have to fight something and he's on the planes for sure. Oh. Natural six right there. This is sick. I'll help you guys have headphones on. The bass is sick. Okay, so many things to point out here. Oh, my mind. Okay, so number one, really cool stuff. <laughs> number two, let's actually go back and grab some things. So we're feeling like A is, oh, I remember what I want to talk to you about. Now, we found this in Elden Ring. And what we found was there was four ways of creating tension and indeed suspense using a couple of different things in music. What we can hear right here is something I want to point out to you guys because this is using one of the four ways you can instantly create tension in music. And it's right here. So let me, let me play this for you and I'll show you. So here it goes from up to there, and the note changes. Ah, it slides up. That is called modulating a pitch, and we're going through different microtones. Microtones are the notes between the notes. So we go from here. This is a note. This is a note. This is a note. This is a note. But then we have all these little notes between the two notes. And so sliding up and down between two different notes actually is what creates a lot of the tension 
And it's not the only thing, but it is a certainly a large contributing factor to the tension here in this music. Now, you might be wondering, well, Dan, what are the other four ways? Number one was tremolo, which means very fast. So if we can... I mean, I think we'd all agree that's not the most pleasant thing to listen to. That has some tension in it. And let's see. I don't remember what number three or four off the top of my head, but if we hear them, I'll point them out to you as we go. I think one of them was, oh yeah, one of them was when you have two different notes against each other. So imagine we have this and then listen to this. All right, this is going to be, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry for what I'm about to do to your ears. All right, check this out. Okay, that had tension in it. And then you can combine all the different elements to create even more tension together. Extremely dissonant, yes. And so we could hear here in Ease of Planes was a series of And when you compare that modulating note, Oh gosh, so much tension in there. Okay, let's check out Isana Plane's Night Theme. Yes, this does not have the ticking gum bar. Here we can hear the second way I said of developing tense, you can hear in your right ear, tremolo. Turn my headphones down just a little bit.
You can see it right there. Going in and out of tune with each other to imply a little bit of danger. Now, there's a real difference between the Izana Plains day and night theme. The, there was many things. One thing I'd like to point out is the ticking clock sound changed from Izana Plains day to Izana Plains night. I wonder if you are safe from a certain type of enemy or time-based something. Maybe it's like, I don't know, maybe it's like Breath of the Wild where when you're in the desert, oh no, not when you're in the desert it was too, oh yeah, the desert was too hot, but then also in the lava it was too hot and you had to get the special, you needed to drink something or wear the special clothes to be good around the heat. Maybe that's something going on there. I'm not sure. There is no safety. Hmm. Only danger. Okay. All right. And something I want to point out to you guys, uh, I want to teach you because this is going to help us really bring home this idea of this ecstasy of gold inspired theme is the idea of the first two notes. <laughs> Because we actually heard that here, both in Izana Plains Day and Izana Plains Night, where it started off with the first two notes of the theme, which I'm just going to call it the Ecstasy of Gold theme, even though it's not technically Ecstasy of Gold. We're just going to call it that, where it's the... And note right there, between the first note and the second note, that is called an interval of a perfect fifth. A perfect fifth. So whenever you hear the perfect fifth... Sure. Things change after that, but that's a callback. That's a hearkening. That's indeed a light motif, if you will, or indeed a variation on a light motif. Right there. Here it goes. It changed after the first note. So the composer's bringing these elements, even if it's just two notes, and then changing what happens after it through this OST to give you a feeling of continuity, to give you a feeling of, okay, I'm still in the same world, I'm still in the same universe. Let's keep it going with Keeves, a battle. You ask Jeeves, and you battle Keeves. Let's get this thing rock and rolling.
Okay. So, some of these chords moves pretty fast and I did not get them on first time through, so I'm gonna tell you what happened here. First of all, it starts, E is one. And then we go to A, major, back and forth. And right here. So it's E minor to F major 7 to. Then where do we go? To B minor. <laughs> uh, to. Kinda, something like that. Whatever, we're gonna skip that part right there. <laughs> A minor, which is four. Back to B minor, which is one. A minor, G. A minor, B minor, C. Two. Is that uh, D over E? Whoa. To be about uh, ah, see me an A over B. I knew that had two in the had two in the bass there. So and then back to one. So this is really cool. So this is called an A major, but instead of having an A as low note, a B is the lowest note. Hear it a lot in R and B, also in funk, also sometimes in fusion. And what this does is this sets us up to have the B, which is the five of E. So if E is one, B is five. B is here telling us that we're on our way to go back to the B, excuse me, back to the E. But indeed, we take a moment to have an A over the B and then a proper B, which then brings us back to one. A delightful, awesome piece of music that I thoroughly enjoyed. Type a three in the chat if that's your favorite piece in the OST. Type a four if your favorite piece is still to come. And if you're watching this in the VOD, the VOD, the video on demand, go ahead and put that in the comments. A three if that's your favorite. A four if something is yet to come. Oh, I, see a th I see a couple threes. I see a lot of fours. Ooh, see a lot of fours. Oh my goodness. The fours is strong with this one. Okay, let's keep it going with soldiers something. Read it down here. This is, what, this is what I would think training camp would sound like.
Now, one of the things I love about doing these streams is I get to learn all the time. I never stop learning, never stop growing in music. Don't let the fact that I teach music or I've written books on music or anything make you think that I don't have anything more to learn because I do and I'm always learning and I'm always growing. It's one of the amazing things about music. It just keeps on going forever. It never stops. Now, I just learned something today about what a peon is. So this was Soldier's Peon. And what this is, it's a song. Ooh, I just saw someone put the, let's see, uh, a song of triumph or praise. Now, I did not know this term. Very cool. So I just learned this along with you today, just now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there you go. So really cool stuff there that we just learned a new word. Now, this does sound much more triumphant. This does sound much more military to me as opposed to big conflicts. This sounds to me almost like it could be played behind a montage of troops moving about. And indeed, I would love to... <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. And... Uh, sorry, I just got distracted by <laughs> moderating the chat. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and change gears here. Talk about indescribable unease. Let's check it out. Type of three if you're still with me. Type of three if you're enjoying this stream. Type of three if you're ready to keep rocking and rolling with this Xenoblade Chronicles 3, type of three. Let me see those threes in the chat. Okay, I'll listen to it. Now, 
as a teacher and a lover, a passionate lover of music, I will tell you that I am always going to give you the same amount of in-depth breakdown for every single song, regardless of whether I personally like it or not. I find that to be a very valuable thing. That's one of my personal values. Songs like this, I have a little bit of a hard time giving you concrete things because this is really just not up my alley. Uh, I mean, it sounds very mysterious. Let's talk about it's making it mysterious. Number one, the very high, like right here, playing these piano notes very high, and it's also two tracks of pianos, or it could be one person with two hands indeed, playing these piano notes that are not quite in sync together. Yeah, two hands. <laughs> and then combined with these sound effects here, it's just a feeling of un- ease. Mystery is going down. Someone's doing something they shouldn't be doing. Someone's setting up intrigue and plots, perhaps. Uh, we're witnessing someone do something nefarious, perhaps in a cutscene. Or indeed, we're exploring something. We're on a investigation mission, something like that. But the incredible unease does indeed make me feel incredibly uneasy the indescribable unease. So go ahead and type a two in the chat if this also makes you feel pretty uneasy. <laughs> Let's check out Iris Network. Ooh, that was cool. Love it. And here's the loop. 
Okay, we're gonna bring it back to the beginning and I'm gonna break down for you what's going on here. This is a really cool song with some very, very interesting chords that I'm very excited to bring to you. Okay, so right here we have an F minor 7 to a D major 7 a F minor 7 to a D flat major 7 a F minor 7 to a D flat major 7 to a C minor. So you have 1, 6, 1, 6, 2, 5 minor. flat so right there it was D flat C minor D flat C minor back to F so it's six five six five one four five six uh, two okay so then to B flat and first inversion which is going to be our four, but major this time. And then likely with leading tone leading us to something that's E flat. E flat major. E, e fully diminished seven to F minor. To G flat major seven. And that's about it for the chord progression. But right there, that is so, so cool. So. B flat minor, C minor. Oh, uh, maybe I got the order wrong there. Let's pull it back. So B flat. Yeah, to C minor. Ah, to D flat major seven. To B flat first inversion. E flat. E fully diminished seven back to F minor. So what's happening here is that the chords are walking up. Oh, let's check that out again. That's what's happening in the lowest note of the chords. And so we can call this a bass line. And the bass line is walking up and you can feel that the bass line in and of itself creates tension and then resolution and the tension happens here 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 this is the most tension and then resolution back and if we pair that with the chords Oh, it's such a beautiful chord progression, such a beautiful movement to bring us back home to the F. All right, type of three for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 if you're ready to go on to disc two. Type of three for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 if you're ready to keep rocking and go on to disc number two. Let's go. All right. Let's do this thing. We're going to run straight into Alfato Valley. Personally, I would prefer Alfredo Valley with a side of chicken, but I will save my lunch cravings for another time. G is one.
major i was expecting that the first time around i figured for sure it wasn't going to come the second time around okay so complete shift from disc one in disc one we heard a lot of e being one. We heard C being one. We heard A being one. Indeed, we even heard F being one. Here, for the first time, I believe, in the soundtrack so far, we're hearing G as being one. And this change of which letter of the musical alphabet is one is part of what's giving us a shift, a different sound, a different feeling, and indeed showing a different biome, a different area, a different arena, however you would like to call it. Now, there's some interesting chords going on here, so we're going to pull it back, and I'm actually going to break down for you what's happening in terms of the chords. So keep in mind, G is gonna be one, A two, B flat in this case is three, C four, D five, E flat is six, F is going to be seven, and we're gonna get rock and rolling. We're not gonna go through the whole thing, just some of it. And I'm gonna talk you through what's happening. This is G, this is one. E flat. that major seven D minor back to one G minor sorry I can't help me turn it up C minor four. B flat, flat three. A flat, flat two, A flat major seven. To five, sus four, when the chord is sus. To five, seven. Going to one. E flat C minor C minor B flat All right, some cool stuff there. I'm just waiting for us to find a song all oh, that has a little bit more kick to it, but that was beautiful, 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 beautiful. Let's see what happens here. What stays the same in the night versus the day theme? Let's get it rock and rolling. And by the way, if you're just joining us, my name's Dan, I'm a music teacher, and this is the first time I've ever heard Xenoblade Chronicles 3. So I'm gonna break down the music, 
explain some things. You're going to learn some things along the way. We're going to have some fun. Let's keep it going. <laughs> G minor F Okay, what did I nail? At the end, it ended on the parallel major. So G minor was the one the whole way through the song until the very last, very last moment of the song, at which point it ended, just like the day theme and the parallel major, which means it ended on a G major. Delightful, beautiful, lovely. We're going to keep going to nearing the enemy. Thank you. 
All right, guys, I got to do something here. This was so cool. Permit me to go back and do this one again. Type a two in the chat if and when you start enjoying what is about to happen. Type a three if you'd prefer if I just went to the next song so I can hear your feedback. Ooh, many of you would just prefer if I go to the next one, yes? Okay. I'll tell you what. We'll fast forward a little bit. to try that out and see how that worked again if you prefer if i just go on to the next song let me know if you don't want to hear me like you know playing every once in a while now i forgot the numbers i put to it so real talk type of two if you'd prefer if i didn't take guitar souls and just went on to the next one type of three if you enjoyed the guitar souls so type of two if you prefer if i didn't do guitar souls and just kept going type of three if you enjoyed it Sorry, I forgot about the numbers the first time. Ah, some threes. Okay. I see some twos. Rusty Mary Gentleman. that move for that figure a couple times
Okay, thank you very much, Return of the Space, Space Cowboy, for donating $20.78. You can donate. There's a Streamlabs link in the description of this video, and you can upvote your favorite OST that you would like for me to react to next as your way of supporting this channel. Now, let's talk about Impending Crisis, because in Impending Crisis, we can hear this idea of two notes being right next to each other, creating so much tension. And indeed, the two notes we hear is essentially a C and a D flat. Now, we can hear the C and the D flat being used first to set the tension and then to even increase the tension when, oh my gosh, this was really genius, really genius work here. So, so here, what you're hearing is C, D flat, C, and because of C and the D right next to each other in the, in the alphabet, there's going to be tension there. C, 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 D flat, C, 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 D flat, C, C. So lots of C's, lots of D flats. Now here's where it gets really cool. This is wild stuff here. We have that bomb. God rest you, merry gentlemen. Uh, Christmas Carol. Now. See? Again. See, with that, it sounds like maybe a, ooh, what's it called? A tenor trombone there? Or a baritone trombone, excuse me. And so right here, you have, it sounds like maybe the French horn's playing a D flat. And this is actually going back, guys, this is so cool, full circle moment. Do you remember when I first introduced the idea of dissonance to you? It was because we had two notes that were right next to each other. Now, these two notes, the main note, and then one note down, one note just a little lower. This time, we have the main note and one note a little bit higher, creating the tension here. And right here, you can hear both the D-flat and C at the same time. That's one of the reasons why this sounds so dissonant. It's because you can hear the... Oh. Oh, type it to in the chat if this is dissonant to you. This is what's happening in the music right here. We have a C and also a D-flat at the same time. Type it to if that sounds pretty darn dissonant. Dang, that's dissonant. Yeah, pretty pretty dissonant <laughs> wild speaker says is disgusting and that's your audience vote for today now let's keep going with immediate threat like a 7-8 in there.
Heck yes. Oh my gosh. Bravo! Bravo! That was sick. That was sick. That was so good. 10 out of 10, five stars, macaroni and cheese with bacon. I mean, just like as good as it gets. As good as it gets. You said, someone just said, just you wait. You're telling me that, all right, real talk, real talk, type a two in the chat, type a number two, if I ain't seen nothing yet after listening to this song. No. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. Real talk. Some soundtracks, this is the climax. Like this this is this is the top of the top. This is disc two. The disc two of nine. And chat saying Oh my gosh. Easily my favorite track so far. I'm always biased. I love rock things. I love progressive things. Oh my gosh. Oh that was so good. That was so good. All right, hang on. I'm not even paying attention to the time signature here. Okay, let me let me try and figure out what's actually going on with the drums here, with the rhythm, because it's very interesting stuff.
Yeah, so it's like there's a there's a measure of seven eight in there. So it's like four four seven eight, then back to four four. That's sick. Yeah, yeah, four four seven eight. Great call, Evil's Bane. Yep, well done. Yeah, the, those seven eights in there are just delicious. Okay, so why is seven eight so cool, and why am I geeking out about it? Okay, so let's understand this because we haven't talked about rhythm so far in this reaction, so we should do that. The most common way music is presented rhythmically is called 4-4. Four, four. This is most common. In fact, it's so common, it's sometimes even called common time. Now, in 4-4, four, four, we count as 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'll actually give you an example here along with the music. I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4 as the music plays. 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, Four. Type a one in the chat if you can hear that my counting is lining up with the music. Even if you don't know music, you can hear the pattern of how there's a repeating pattern. Every time I say one, it feels like the pattern starts again. I'll do it one more time for you. So this is the most common way music is presented is in 4-4, four, four. we count 1, 2, 3, 4, and the pattern of the music agrees with this 4-4 four, four going around. And I'm not going to get too much further in other than to say that the pattern agrees with 4. Okay. Now, these four counts, in music we call these beats. B-E-A-T-S, beats. Now, there's four beats. The four counts are each four beats. Now, these four beats can be divided into two equal parts each, which get just eight parts. So I'm going to go ahead and now count with the division. And so when I count the division, instead of saying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm going to say one and, two and, three and, four and. So every time I say and, that's going to evenly divide the time between the one, the two, the three, the four, and then the four, and then the next one. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay. So what we have there is one and two and three, and that's a total of eight. That's a total of eight. And now what's going to happen in this next section is it's going to alternate between groups of these 4-4 four, four, where there's eight divisions, and then sometimes they're going to take just the last division off. Excuse me, I was holding up nine fingers. Where there's eight divisions, and then they're going to take one division off at the end so that there's seven divisions instead of eight. And so this gives you a little bit of a stutter step because your ear is so used to hearing not only does the composer give you 4-4 four, four down the middle right here, but you're also used to hearing 4-4 four, because four you hear it all the time in almost every music you listen to. Well, unless you're, you know, big into game music, big into film music, then you might uh, be used to hearing other time signatures too. But with that being said, let's keep going. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I just counted there with the one, two, three, fours. Now I'll count the one and two and three and four. And you'll hear I'm not going to say the and after the four for the group of seven. So I'm saying one and two and three and four, one. There's not going to be one and two and three and four and. We're going to take the last and away. One, two and three and four. One, two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One, two and three and four and one and two. You hear it right there. It said one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One. So we took the last, the last and away from the end of the group of eight. And that creates a feeling of uncertainty, of timing and throws you off for sure. And that's also, if we think about it on a fundamental level, what is a video game other than timing that throws you off and difficult to understand timing? And the more difficult it is to understand the timing in a video game, the harder the boss fight is. And we could think about this with any boss fight in any video game. It's timing that is not intuitive, and that is what makes it difficult. And speaking as a musician, whenever I'm playing a boss fight, my first thing is to just watch the boss and figure out the timing of the boss, and then I work backwards, and then I figure out how to beat the boss after first observing the timing. Okay, let's keep this thing going. Thank you very much for the super chat, DE Domain. I will read out all super chats at the end of the stream. Okay, let's keep this going with the two off seers. Not to be confused with 20% off at Sears.
Wow. I don't even know what to do with that, other than to walk you through some of the music of what happened there. So, let's take it back to the beginning. So, clearly some kind of battle, some kind of con contention. So in this case, A is going to be R1. They're going to E, so A to E, 1 to 5. And again, hanging out in the E area here. Oh, and then just distortion. Tension. Now this sounds like maybe we're heading into a second, second phase of a boss fight perhaps here. Now B is one. Sharp. G sharp. A. Back to G sharp. So now the two offseers, I imagine there's two people, and I did indeed see in chat, someone said that there's two people fighting here, and you can hear that because of the two tonic areas. And it seems to me, based on the music, that these two people are either related, have similar styles, or belong to the same sect, religion, belief system, come from the same town. There's something very similar to these two, but just a little bit different. How do I know this? Because the first sound was in... A, A was one, and then we went to down right next to the neighbor, which was G sharp, which is the neighbor note, which is very similar in everything. Everything sounds similar. All right, so are these, uh, they fulfill the same role in opposing armies, same position, two different sides, both have the same job, and they're very connected. Yep, there you go. That's what the music is saying. That's the story that the music is telling. All right, let's check out Suffocating Reverberation.
Okay, so I think what's interesting about this piece is it sounds like there is the suffocating. I can hear it. It's because it's the music moves from minor chord to minor chord over and over again. There's no reprieve until the very end. It feels like maybe this is a level where you have perhaps a, a time-based thing where maybe you need to uh, move around, I don't know, gas or you mean to move through water somewhere where perhaps you can't breathe and it's like there's no real rest there's no real rest and finally you get to a place where you can rest maybe i'm reading it wrong but that is what it sounds like to me let's go ahead and pull this back and talk about what's going on here in the music a little bit Yeah, no correct choice. It's like C minor. To B minor, back to C minor. And the thing is that the music above the chords is not quite agreeing with the chords. And that's what's creating a lot of ooh, friction and uncertainty and feeling like there's no good way to go. It's, there's this dissonance that keeps on getting ahead of you. There's always something that's ahead of you in terms of the dissonance. They're at E minor. E minor major 7, back to E minor, uh, that was E minor 7 to E minor major 7, back to E minor, And so what we heard there was a little bit of reggae remix on the fly for suffocating reverberation because uh, why not? <laughs> abandon, abandon all not reggae, all ye who entered here. <laughs> we found our way. And so what was happening here was we had an E minor, E minor major seven, to an E minor 7, back to an E minor major 7. Ooh, delightful. Okay, let's get this thing going with Ouroboros Awakening. And if you don't know how an Ouroboros sounds when it awakens, it sounds like this. <coughs> because its tail is... And it's, it's sleep apnea. Okay, anyway, all right, Ouroboros Awakening.
Okay, let's go back and see what was going on in this here. Ouroboros waking up. Let's off with G. G is one. G minor specifically. G minor again. We're all in G minor here. F sharp major. It's a B flat minor. B about minor seven in there. To D minor. To C. C sharp to C. C minor. Going to G, back to G. I mean, what a wild ride so far. F minor. To E flat major. To B flat in first inversion. To D flat. To E flat. Back to F minor. Kind of maybe a little bit more like G minor at the time. E flat. E flat. Back to F minor. So, quite a harmonic journey, this Ouroboros Awakening. Wild stuff. A beautiful, beautiful chord progression. And I really loved it. Let's go ahead and keep rocking and rolling with Mobius Battle. Well, maybe you guys don't want to hear that. I don't know. Hmm... Yeah. All right, here we go. Oh, come on, light down, please.
Oh, that was sick. Oh, I love it. Alright, come on now. I don't know what was with the monkey paw, monkey paw right at the end there, but everything else, <laughs> I'm just joking. That was sick. That was amazing. Uh, you're going to get a Megalovania Mobius Battle Remix right here, right now, live and in real time, if I can pull this off. Let's see if I can do this. Wish me luck.
Okay. It does work, though. <laughs> okay. All right. So, that's... How did I just do what I just did? Well, ear training, music theory, and then knowing other music. So, what I did is I heard the chords that were being played in Mobius Battle right at the end there, and I knew that those same chords work with Megalovania. And in fact, we're going to do that one more time because I want to do some wah pedal. I also want to turn my guitar up a little bit because I could hardly hear my guitar. Type a two in the chat for one more time through this remix of Megalovania and Mobius Battle. Type a three if you'd rather not. Type a two if you want this remix. Type a three if you'd rather not. Type a two if you want this remix. Type a two in the chat. All right, let's do this thing. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's keep this thing going with Against the World. Okay. All 
All right, let's pull this back and I'm gonna break this down for you as we go tell you what's actually happening here in the music. Okay, so it start off on G minor. Now we're in A minor. Start at G minor. Now we're A minor. Now things are moving. So essentially it's going one to five. Now E A minus one, excuse me. A minor, first inversion. To five. E seven. A minor. More A's. A's for days. Back to G. G minor now. G first inversion. F major, E minor, E flat major, C minor to Oh, I lost that for C minor, sorry. D minor. Okay, and then we have the walkie up thing, so let me catch that. Alright, so there we're going. calling the C. Let's see what we're calling the C. And this is another ascending bass line here. You know, we'll call it a C minor. And that's about what's going on there in Against the World. Let's keep this going with a life woven together. Type a four in the chat for underwater basket weaving. Type a four in the chat if you are a fan of underwater basket weaving.
flat to B flat, and we're going to C minor. B flat. A flat. Major 7. E flat with an add to C minor. A minor to B flat, major seven. To F to C, B flat. And I mean, you could hear how many different chords were in this. This is showing us a life. This is showing so many different stages of life, so many different people in our life, so many different, if we think of a life as inputs, so many different inputs, and then outputs, maybe also we could think of a life as being, right? You know, we, we input information, we input, uh, inf yeah, we input information, we output information. It's kind of like what life is, right? And this does indeed sound like a life woven together. Many different parts. Perhaps this is indeed a cutscene where we're seeing different points in a person's life. Chad, I'd love to know if I'm on the money with that. It'd be very cool to know. Am I on the money that this is a cutscene where we're seeing different parts of someone's life or perhaps a montage of sorts going through different things? Not exactly seeing their life. End of a life. Okay. So maybe if it's the end of a life, it's, it could be representing all the different feelings you have. Like when someone leaves, when someone passes away, there's many different feelings that you feel. It's not just sadness. There's all, it's a very complex thing that we feel inside of ourselves. Well, and then this next, I think, ties it on with a life sent on. So let's actually move forward and check out a life sent on. Sorry. make to our very first piece of music we heard this whole OST.
Okay, so this is actually very similar, in fact, nearly identical to our, the first piece we listened to. Yeah. A minor. F. A G. And indeed. Okay, so we can hear that now if we go back to what we were just listening to, which was a life sent on. Same thing, A minor, F, C, to G. B flat to A minor to oh I lost the last one uh, to A no yeah to to a D and first inversion hmm. <laughs> no hang on. There, to the D in first inversion. F. G. And there we go. So a very interesting way of navigating it. Let's break that down. So we're going to say C is 1. So we go to D minor, which is 2, to B flat, which is flat 7, to A minor, which is 6, to... D in first inversion, <laughs> which is beautiful, by the way, which then creates this half step motion back down to F. Now, what is it that I mean by first inversion? Well, let's talk a little bit about our numbers and letters again. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, the way we can think about this is let's use C again. So we go C, D, E, F, G, so we have C, E, and G. We can think about this as being one, two, three, four, five. And when we play one, three, and five together at the same time, that creates a major chord. Ah, there we go. There's our major chord. Now, what happens if we take this C, we now make it the highest note? So remember how we went up A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A? How the second A is higher than the first A? Well, it's the same thing with Cs. This is a low C. This is a higher C. And so what happens is if we take this C and we bump it up here, so instead of having C, E, G, so instead of having 1, 3, 5, we have 3, 5, 1, 3, 5, 1. That's called an inversion of a chord. And when we have more than two notes together at the same time, or sometimes even more than one note together at the same time, two notes or more is a chord. And so what we're doing here is we're changing the order of the notes of the chord. And so first inversion means we took the lowest note of the chord and we made it the highest note. So the second lowest note is now the lowest note. So that's D in first inversion. So the second note of the D chord, using F sharp, is actually now the lowest note. Let's check out Quiet Intrigue.
Okay. Well, other than losing us 40 viewers, uh, what else do I have to say about Quiet Intrigue? Well, it was quiet, and there was clearly a lot of intrigue going on. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so, yeah, some interesting things going on there. Interesting use of the flute. Interesting use of some some, some symbol sound effects and things like that. But uh, other than that, I think we just go on to Hostile Colony. How about that? Okay, let's go. Sorry. Oh. Okay, so let's take a look at this and understand how, again, neighbor notes are going to build up the tension. So here we go. We're going from D to B e flat to D. D is right next to E in the alphabet. They're very close. C sharp to D. C right next to D. We're going neighbor above, neighbor below. And then I called out the chords as we went. So let's keep this thing rocking and rolling with Hostile Colony. Not dynamic, just Hostile Colony. Oh yeah.
We're gonna let it go straight into everyday life. Let's keep this going. Straight into everyday life. Let's do this thing. Beautiful everyday life. Let's back up and actually understand what was going on here in the music. C, D, E minor, to F major. C, D, E7, to E minor, F. Ah, so then we have F to D in first inversion to uh, G to uh, an E in first inversion, which then brings us back to C, which is really interesting because the E in first inversion actually would normally bring us to an A minor, but instead of going to A minor, it goes to C. Well, 
actually not quite. Let's play that back. That's really an A, G sharp, fully diminished, or G sharp, fully diminished. Uh, G sharp diminished or G sharp fully diminished. Seven. To an A sus. To a G sus. When the chord is sus, it's not a meme, it's a real thing. E flat, A minor. G minor, C major. B e flat, major, A minor. D minor. B flat, C. A7 to D minor. And we'll call it there for our analysis of what's going on in everyday life. Let's go on to the bereaved and those left behind. Stick with us. We have two more tunes to go for this stream. Don't miss them. Miners one. G major. F major. C to D. To D minor. D first inversion there. F. G sus to G. To B flat there, hang on, I missed those real quick. So that's an A sus two. To a G minor 9, to a C7 9, hmm. right, to a D in first inversion, oh, that's wild, okay, so from the D in first inversion, So it's, a, it's a D in first inversion 9, so there's a lot of 9 chords here. Hmm. I'm not even sure what that chord is. Oh my gosh!
Lord have mercy, we stumped Dan. Oh, E flat major seven. No duh. <laughs> I didn't think of a seventh. Oy. And we're going to go ahead and give that a rest there before I sit here and make you like, you know, I don't want you to sit here for like 200 years while I figure out these chords. But there you go. That's some of what's going on in there. And that was really some really cool things like the G minor 9 to the C7 9 to the D in first inversion 9. Wild stuff. Beautiful. Real quick, before we listen to this last one, I do not run ads on this channel. I did not interrupt this stream at any point in time to give you any other information other than the music. So please, like, subscribe, crush that notification bell, and share this stream with a friend who you think might enjoy it. That's my only ask for you. Let's check out Off Seer. Here we go. I didn't finish. What do you mean I didn't finish? Now I'm being told I didn't listen to the last half of the last track, which I don't know what happened in my brain that that didn't happen. So let's go check that out. Sorry, guys. Starting off with our Ecstasy of Gold.
Okay, and that's where it ended. So one thing I want to point out is actually a rhythmic figure and melodic figure that was brought up both in this piece and many times over, at least in these first two discs of this OST medicine. You can hear the piano doing that here. Now we heard it also in minor. Well, also in major context with this, with a half step instead of a whole step. We've heard it. We've heard that quite a few times so far in this OC. So it'll be interesting to hear how that comes back because that in and of itself is a motif, at the very least a rhythmic, rhythmic motif. And we could also say a melodic motif indeed because we keep on having the starting note going up, starting note down, up. Yeah, they do do it a lot with the flutes. Yes, that's correct. With that being said, again, I do not run any ads. I do not interrupt the stream for anything other than to bring you the joy and the thrill of understanding some of your favorite music. So please like, subscribe, crush that notification bell, and share this stream with a friend who you think might enjoy this. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and read some of the super chats that were super chatted during this game. So give me one second to pull that up. I'm going to put some background music on. Okay. Oh, wrong account over here. Got music theory for gamers. There we go. Okay, super chats from today. Hehe, <laughs> I am Dirt Matter says, I pre-recorded Xenoblade 3 and played it after I got off work at midnight. Didn't get to hear the title screen and its full glory. That might until I got, uh, that, that night until I got home, sorry. Thanks for covering this game, Dan. Can I add this to the Pikmin series? Yes, I think we have Pikmin on there. Hehe, <laughs> Dirt Matter, I'll add it to that for sure. Thank you very much for supporting this channel with your super chat, and I will for sure add that super chat to the list. So thank you very much. DMG says, keep watching out for flutes. Very important in OST. Thank you, DMG. They have been very prominent. Both, I believe we call them, I don't know. I don't think we heard Sakuhachi. We heard something else that didn't sound like a metal flute. CJ says, hello and good morning, Dan. Sorry guys, I'm looking down here because the writing up on my teleprompter is quite small. Well, I could try. Hello and good morning, Dan. Greetings from Japan. Oh, ohayo gozaimasu. This OST features heavily specific instrument being shinobu. Ah, these flutes, thank you, CJ. CJ bringing it home. These flutes were physically made for the OST by Master Craftsman, and you can hear them through the OST. Very interesting. So I think this is the first time I've been exposed to this particular type of flute. I do know the Sakuhachi well. Very cool, thank you very much for that info, CJ. I really do appreciate both the support for the channel and also the info tying that up at the perfect time when I was starting to question what was going on with the flutes. Danvar, hey Danvar. Danvar says, hey Dan, this goes to Final Fantasy VI. You got it, Danvar. Rubberman202 says, so I'm guessing we're moving back to YouTube now, huh? Looks like it, Rubberman, given the fact that we had over 300 people for most of this stream. I mean... It just makes sense. Probably for the best, though hanging out on Twitch was fun for a while. It was, and my gosh, I really wish I could stream to multiple channels because I would love to continue streaming to Twitch because that was great and I love Twitch. Please put the Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars OST. You've got it, rubber man. Godot Coffee Storm says, I love Inherited Melody. Very important to remember this piece. Thank you so much for your super chat. Thank you for your support, Godot Coffee Storm. I really appreciate it. And Magido 1000 says, thanks for all your work. Please put this to Dan Gan Rampa. You got it, Magido. Robo Blaster says, been looking forward to this stream ever since Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And put this towards Persona 5 Royale. I know you're going to love it. You got it. Alexander Lawrence says, most flute-led non-battle songs here are... Ooh. Here's a word I don't know. I'm going to have to look this up. Hold, please.
are diegetic of or relating to artistic elements that are perceived as existing within a world depicted of narrative work. Whoa, that occurs as part of the action rather than the background can be heard by the film's Oh, the film's characters can hear the flutes? That's cool. Oh, that's really interesting. Thank you for that, Alexander Lawrence. Thank you also for your super chat and your support. DE Domain says, Hey there, Dan. I've lurked on your streams for a while, and I've got something nice for you. Can you do, do this a Deep Woken OST? I think it's fully available on YouTube. You got it. And then DED Domain goes on to say, Oh, I almost forgot this one's To the Sky, Children of the Light OST. Got it. Spectre First says, Dan, this goes towards the Blasto soundtrack, one of the most adaptive dynamic video game soundtracks ever made. Made in 1998, using sequenced MIDI samples that provide a multitude of variety in every soundtrack. Love your work. Thank you very much, Spectre. First, for your super chat, I'm going to refresh this list one time because I think some extra ones came in right at the end. Kato Coffee Storm says, eh, chuck a bit at Sonic on. Leashed, you got it. We're also going to go ahead and some people did some donations over on Streamlabs. Thank you very much. So we're going to go to Streamlabs. Okay, we have today, well, yesterday, Joseph Cortez again tying themselves for the channel record again with a $500 donation through Streamlabs. Thank you, Joseph Cortez. Joseph Cortez says, ah, ha, 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 reckless spending. Please put this towards the Mass Effect trilogy. It shall be on the top and stay on the top. And it looks like it is indeed going to be that way for you, Joseph. Thank you very much for support of this channel. The Return of the Space Cowboy says, hey, yo. Hope you're having a fun stream. This upload goes to Sonic Unleashed. Thank you, Return of the Space Cowboy. And Davis says, your reaction has been fantastic so far. I haven't heard the official OST release for this game yet, and it's been full, really fun to see how they pull all the game songs together. Put this towards Pokemon Black and White, the best Pokemon OST. You got it, Davis. Thank you all so very much. And again, a special shout out and thank you. A special thank you to, uh, to Joseph Cortez for for two weeks in a row, first setting and then tying the channel donation records. Thank you all very much. If you're watching this on demand, please, if you would like to support this channel, there's a Streamlabs link below this. You can do that. Uh, you do not need to do that. I will still come do these streams, even if you don't do that. All I ask is that you tell a friend, like, and subscribe. I will see you all next time. Take care. Thank you so very much for joining me on this wild ride. And I will see you all for the next discs next week. Take care and goodbye.